Hello everybody, it's Vinyl Rich here with Vinyl Finds number 66. Uh, I got some music playing. Hope we I don't get a copyright. And on this one, I'm gonna crack open a Grosch. It's been hotter than heck. It's been a hot summer. It didn't pop like it usually does. Now that's good. I haven't had a beer in close to a month. I actually worked 21 days straight. It's be my first day off in three weeks. And I, I don't, if I, if I have to work, I don't drink that day. Anyways, I showed this is Grow Fins, Rarities, Captain Beefheart. This is Volume 2. I showed this a couple of uh, videos back. And this is Volume 3. The Volume 3 was live stuff. The Volume 2 was uh, Trout Mask Replica outtakes. I never really got into trout mask replica that much I never got beyond side one to be quite honest um, I would be at a friend's house and I always used to go through the records and I would I put it on a few times and there there was this one song in their third song maybe and it was just like man they just made this up as they were going along but uh this made me kind of like reevaluate it and I'm gonna have to check that album out now, of the Volume 2 and Volume 3, the Volume 3 was better than the Volume 2. The Volume 2, it had a lot of untitled stuff. And, honestly, it was just them... It was like the Beatles Let It Be tapes, you know, where they were just noodling in the studio. And, and But the, the actual songs that are on here are pretty cool. So I'm going to have to check out uh, Trout Mask Replica. Now... These first two albums I'm going to show here that are, those two I had, I've had. These first two albums here that I'm going to show are the two albums I've been playing constantly over and over and over. I tend to play the same record over and over quite a bit. And all these other ones I probably listened to one or two times. But anyways, this is the first, this is volume one of that three volume set of, uh, Grow Fins, Rarities, Captain Beefheart, Rarities. This is really good. And uh, I bought this on Discogs. I've probably maybe bought a half a, I bought a half a dozen albums on Discogs in the last couple of years. And I wanted to check out Volume 1. And man, am I glad I did. I checked it out on YouTube. And uh, this is the best of the three. This is the real early stuff. Uh, what are the years? I bet it says on here. Okay, this is Grow Fins Volume 1. Just got back from the city. Electricity is the name of it. And it's got tracks from 66 to 67. Really early. I, I, I dig that first Captain Beefheart album. It may be my favorite. That Spotlight Kid. But uh, this is this is way better than the other two. The other two were cool. The live one was good, but this is excellent. And uh, these are like unofficial releases. But uh, what is his name? Drumbo? He had something to do with these. He's mentioned on here. So that they might be some of his tapes or something. I'm not sure. And like the other ones, it comes with this really cool book. Captain Beefheart, Grow Fans. I'll show some uh, photos. I didn't really show the photos when I showed the other one. I had some early pictures of them. The Carol side rehearsals. There's a good shot of him. I think that's probably the one shot I did show in my other video. But yeah, this is a really excellent album. If you're going to get one of the three, get the first one. That's if you see it. I've never seen this. I mean, just until recently I heard of these. 
That's I I always like lick my decals off, baby, more than a trout mask replica. And this is what the it's a double album. This is what it looks like, and this is the back side. Um, so I have six sides of Captain Beefheart rarities. Really cool. Now this next album, I saw it first on uh, Dots and Loops showed it on a. I think it was called a Psych Obscurities video he did. Ah oh, man, that does taste good. I'll probably have a few more of these tonight. The Dodgers are going to play the Mets. It's going to be on ESPN. I'll check that out. But uh, Dots and Loops showed this album. And also Naz Nomad recently showed it. Well, a month or so ago. And it's, uh, I always have to look, Har, Haryumi, Gatefold Album, really cool, it basically sounds like it looks, this is a psychedelic, I love this album dude, I've listened to it over and over, um, it's a double album, the first song, it starts out with this, like the, a beat, like a drum beat, like three drum beats or something, and then these horns, and it's like real echoey, I don't know what the musical term for it is, but it's like real echoey, and it's just a psychedelic, it is great. Now the dude, he's, he's a Japanese dude, it was recorded I believe in New York, but you can tell he's a... Uh, English is his second language, he, with the accent. His voice is strained at times. And what's weird is the one song where it's really strained the most is in the first song of the album. And uh, it's kind of like, you hear it and you're going, man, I don't know how well this is going to be. But I don't know if he settles in or whatever, but it's that first song where his vocals get strained a little bit. It's kind of like, what the... But uh, this album... To me, it's like an acid trip. Th this dude definitely dropped acid. I, I I can tell. It sounds like what it sounds like to be on acid. Um, the first two songs are, I mean, first two albums are really trippy. Let's talk about some of these songs. The first song is really trippy, and it's got horns. And I I don't know. It doesn't really list the name of the songs on here anywhere. But yeah, the well, here it is. Free by the River, I think. And it's got uh, horns. And I've never heard horns sound psychedelic before in my life. And uh, they do on this. The second song, though, it's... Uh, well, on the first two sides, the song structures are kind of normal, but they just sound trippy. And the second song, it, it's got... Like a My Girl. It melody in it. It almost sounds <laughs> like My Girl. And then there's a part where it sounds like uh, there's a Jethro Tull song. I don't know if it's Bore or... It, there's a Jethro Tull song that's like, what the heck? This sounds like Jethro Tull. And I'm not sure if this came out before the Jethro Tull one or not. I think this came out in 67. Maybe 68. I don't know. It's a pretty old album. Um, the third song is the most normal song on the album. It's like a normal love song. But it does, it's not normal, let me, let me put it that way. The fourth song, it's got like a Captain Beefheart groove, you know, that early Captain Beefheart. And uh, the fifth song is just spacey as hell. And just so on and so on. The first two, side one and side two, are just like, it's a psychedelic album. Just, I, I think it's great. I don't know if I would call it a grail, but man, I was so glad to get this. Now, side three, now th is this a, class, a great album? No, it isn't. Because side three, to me, sucks. It, it's, it's worth listening to maybe once, but I'll never listen to it again. It's really sparse. Like, maybe one instrument playing, maybe two at the most. And it's this guy... It's like he's tripping out on acid, you know? And he's just like... I mean, the shit he's saying wouldn't make sense to anybody. Except for somebody that's tripping on acid. And, uh... 
I mean, there, there's a point at the end where I guess he's really starting to come on, and he's like, the grass, the blades of grass, the grass is growing. And just like, oh, this dude is, this dude's spacing out, you know? Side four? It's just as crazy, but it's like, it's more instrumentation, almost like a Zappa instrumentation, and all inhibitions are gone. That guy's talking and singing in Japanese now. He said, fuck the English, you know? But yeah, this is a group, I highly recommend this album. Check it out on uh, YouTube before you buy it. I mean, like I said, I've never, never heard of this album before until Dots and Loops showed it. And then uh, Naz Nomad showed it. And then I ran across it and I go, man, I gotta get that. I mean, this one I've been, it's semi-grail to me. I, I had been searching this album. I mean, I always look. Wherever I go to a record store, I always look for this album. And I am so glad I got it. It is fucking good. I'm thinking of doing a 10 favorite psych album, excuse me. And man, this one just might make the 10, dude. It's it's really cool. Anyways, I got some other ones. Uh, let me reset my camera. Alright, as y'all know, my camera, I don't know what it is. It's a new Canon, but it shuts off after 12 minutes. It's fucking ridiculous. Oh, and this is what the, it's on Verve Forecast. That's what the albums look like on that. So I have to look. What's this fucking name? Haryumi or Haryumi. I don't know. Apparently that's a Japanese word. This next one is Going All the Way with the Squires. This is a great, it's a comp. I think this band is, it's another one of them bands that only came out with a few singles. And it's on the Crypt Records. Um, they're the ones that come out with that Back from the Garage or Back from the Grave series. And I, talking about Back from the Grave, I do have a couple of Back from the Grave comps that I haven't shown. In fact, I probably have 10 to 12 60s garage type comps that I have not shown. Um, I'll probably just put them all together. I'll just make a, a 60s garage comp video. In fact, I, I, have, I even have a, a punk Brussels... 70s punk comp and another one that's really psychedelic and uh, another comp that's uh, from Japan Japanese stuff that's really great too but yeah I'll, I'll do that soon and this is the Crypt label really cool this is a it's good all the way through just classic garage rock now speaking of garage rock the Trogs UK band I never really I mean, I know Wild Thing. I thought that was all I knew by him, but apparently there's. I did know uh, with a girl like you. I, I okay, that was another single. But uh, this is their first album. This is a reissue. I think it's a 2003 reissue. It's got the first album, and then it has two bonus tracks on the end of each side, which is pretty cool. And. Uh, this sounds like a U.S. garage band to me. It's really cool. I, I, I'm surprised how much I like it. Because the song Wild Thing, it's not a bad song, but man, it is just so played out. And when X covered it, it was just like, that's when I gave up on X. I quit buying their albums. But yeah, this is really cool. Um, some highlights are Ride Your Pony. I just sing. With a girl like you is a fucking really cool. Um, Our love will still be there. I, I dug that one. And ah, uh, what? Side two. Night of the Long Grass. That's it. That that is a garage classic, dude. This I give this a big thumbs up. If you can find the original, get it. This reissue is really cool too because the four songs they added are really cool. They added them at the end of the side so it doesn't really interfere with the album. And it's on the Fontana label. I don't know if we're going to be able to see that. It is kind of dark in here. But really, really cool. And I don't know if you've noticed but this is going to be all 60s stuff. 
Um, I do have a couple other really great records. I'll show on my next video or so. But I thought, since that Captain Beefheart and that Japanese dude, Harmari or whatever the fuck his name is, I dug those. I thought I would just show all my 60s ones I got here because I have I picked up quite a few in the last two weeks. <laughs> this next one. Southern California band, probably LA, I'm not sure. The, the Comfortable Chair. It looks like a sunshiny pop album. But these dudes are, man, they're like dressed up for Halloween. They look like a... Uh, there's a restaurant in Southern California called Medieval Times or something. And it, that's what they look like they're dressed up, you know, like in Medieval Times shit. But they sound more like a Jefferson Airplane, that type of uh, psychedelic rock. It's not a sunshiny pop album at all. In fact, I, it's really good. It, it, it's better than what I expected. I was kind of expecting. Uh, I was didn't know what, but it's it's better than your typical sunshiny pop stuff. And it's on old records. Now this next one. The box tops. Now, when I was a kid, I loved the box tops. At least the, the two songs, "The Letter" and "Cry Like a Baby." I dug those songs. In fact, I had those two singles. Yeah, they're they're they were called 45s back then, singles, not seven inches. But uh, this is a really good album. I've heard a couple of their albums, and they're like hit and miss. But I really like this one. "Cry Like a Baby" is a great. I actually saw Alex Chilton. I was unaware of uh, who Alex Chilton was. I was unaware of Big Star. And if most people are honest, you were unaware of them too because they didn't sell shit in the 70s. But I saw him like in the early 80s, maybe mid 80s. It was before 85, put it that way. He played at Al's Bar, a little bar downtown LA. They used to play really like, I saw the Misfits there. I saw, you know, bands like that, uh, Super Heroines punk bands or underground bands but Alex Chilton played there and I saw a little write up in the LA Times and it mentioned he was the singer of the box tops and in Big Star so I go man the singer for the box tops cool I'm gonna go see him I was blown away the dude was fantastic live and of course it's on Bell Records the box tops cry like a baby I've only spun this a couple of times because I've been spinning those other two, but yeah, this is a really good album. Second to last one, we got Miles. Miles in the Sky. Miles Davis. This is a uh, late 60s. This is actually the first album. Pretty cool picture of Miles in the back. Look at those pants, dude. Those are that's some cool shit. This is the first album where Miles Davis actually had a guitar on, on the album. And it's only on one song, Paraphernalia, and it's uh, George Benson on guitar. Later, John McLaughlin, after this, would join, join him. But yeah, really cool, psychedelic album. And this, I really dig this album. It's kind of like a spotlight, or it's like a an opening into what was to come it it wasn't the wild electric shit yet but it wasn't the old stuff either it was a little freer and really cool album and it's on the Columbia 2i I mean I was thinking of doing a a jazz video because I am separating my stuff I'm pretty much almost done <laughs> If I show a jazz, if I do a jazz video, it's going to be half Miles Davis. So I, I don't know. I just might do a Miles Davis one. And last but not least, I got the second album by Ultimate Spinish. What is it called? Behold and See. This is really good too. I don't know if I like it as much as their first album. But it's, it's right up there. It, it's a good album. Really solid band out of Boston. I dig this kind of shit. I, I, this is the kind of stuff I'm looking for. That 60s psych stuff. And uh, this is the original sleeve. 
and it's on MGM. I think most people know that album. Like most people probably know all these albums, except for maybe the Captain Beefheart and that Humari dude. But uh, put on some tunes. Yeah, and uh, that's it. I don't know if I'm gonna if I'll do an update on how I organized it. Um, I don't have quite as much punk as I thought I had. I think I have eight of these are full. Maybe nine is punk. But, uh, yeah, I organized it punk and then everything else. Except I separated blues, country, and jazz. And, uh, I, I decided not to do it all totally alphabetical order. Because some of these obscure stuff would get gets lost. If you, if you have, like, a few hundred albums, I, I recommend just do it alphabetical order. But I'm, I'm probably getting close to 2,000 and it's... And the whole idea is to be able to just find the stuff, you know what I mean? It's, and that that's the purpose of it. But I haven't gone through everything, but there's some stuff missing. And that's what's kind of bothering me. I mean, I have the two... I got Gary Newman, I got two of his albums I found. It's like... Fuck, I got eight or nine of his albums. Say six at least. And I have like a box set live one that has like three albums in it. I don't see that anywhere. T-Rex, I could only I only came across two. And I, I know I have almost all his stuff. And so I'm thinking there's gotta be another box or so in the back, in the in the shed in the back. But anyways, I'm digressing. Captain Beefheart, pretty cool shit right there, man. Take care. Cheers. Go Dodgers.